So how do we all work with practicals or practical lighting? Ben, do you want to kick us off? I mean, I, I think it's always good to ask the production design department to give you more practicals than you need because they can, obviously, they, it depends how your light is set. I prefer the ones that have got darker shades, that kind of thing. I'm very specific, I would just, I like, because I'm, I like tungsten lighting, so I, want, I always want tungsten bulbs, just change every bulb. I never use clear bulbs. I don't like candle bulbs very much, I don't like the, the way that it, so I just like, all I want is pearl incandescent bulbs, so that's why I'm specific, it's just about the colour and, uh, you know, and if, they, if the design department would spend a lot of time thinking about their practicals, then it can really help, you can almost light the whole set with them. It's good to have half a dozen that aren't on the set that you can pull in yeah. as well, uh, well or swap yeah, out. Yeah, I mean, less so, I mean, I wish I sometimes had the time to do that, it's a good idea, but I, I do ask them to have more because, you know, you go into a set and you just look around, we don't generally do that, so, you know, if you looked at some of the sets, they go, well, there's, there's a lot of practicals in here, you don't really need them all, but something you can turn down. But I also think that lighting with practicals and china balls just go together really well, and then you're kind of there with a night interior scene, you're kind of there. Yeah. We all know because we've done it so many the, times. The it Philippe Ruslo it will work. Our inner yeah. Philippe comes out and in come the Chinese. Ruslo put his china, his china ball on the old boom, boom arm. Yeah, walked yeah. 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 around with it. Yeah. 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 yeah, I saw those pictures of Ruslo with the china balls 20 years ago, and I was thinking, what's he doing with those? And, and then I thought, then I saw him on a film, and I went, that's just it. That's just that's just. The... And whatever happens with all the new lighting gadgets that come out, you don't always go back to a china ball because yeah. it's just brilliant. I watched him do that once on, I was fixing a camera on Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and, and I had a, it was like a moment of revelation because I'd been using Chinese lanterns on short films and stuff. I oh, needed like a, acres of black wrap to try to control them and you basically turn a Chinese lantern into a, into a Mizar. And I saw how Philippe was doing it on Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and, um, and every time he put one up, the scenic painter would come in and paint the walls black, painting in shadows. Uh, he'd be, and, and Philippe would be directing how deep the shadow would go. Oh, yeah, and right. so he'd be like, oh, it's black from here to here and yeah. brown from here to here. I was like, oh, that's the guy, that's the person I'm missing. Yeah, I'm missing this the... scenic painter that's yeah. following me around. I, I remember when I did, a, I did a TV series with Judy Dench and I, I wanted my own big proper china balls that I could put on stands, so I bought these ones, and I can't remember what they're called, but they had, they, I bought them from France, so they had a very, pretentious French name, but trust me, they were amazing. But they had these long linear bulbs, oh, yeah. filament bulbs in them. And I just, from then I was called them French lanterns, and I always, always lit Judy with these French lanterns because it worked really well. And then if you dim them down, because they have these big long filaments, the filaments start vibrating. Yeah. And then the sound man goes, you can't use those lights. And I went, you've got, well, you've got to have to tell Judy, I can't light her with these lights. She likes these lights. Yeah. You've got to have to deal with it. <laughs> Great cinematographers will, will sometimes, it'll just be a couple of bulbs reflected off a bit of baking foil in the yeah. corner of a room yeah. um, and one lens yeah. is all you need. I mean, that's yeah. the fun bit of our job is, yeah. is lighting interiors, whether it's studios or whatever. It's the fun bit of the job. I love going low take in that way yeah. and getting a great result. Yeah. It's it is, wonderful. It is. You don't need all the time yes. big, expensive new lights. Yes, you can do absolutely. It, a few yeah. bulbs it gets confusing, so just stick to what you know and then do those little little bits and bits of things. It's like, it's like being on Blue Peter, but. Blue yeah. Peter for light, people who love lighting. I think the dialogue with practicals has changed a bit with not modern cameras, isn't yeah. that if you do light, you, you can light from the practicals in the shot, yeah. but then they, they have to be where they work for you as a cinematographer, not where they, the designer wants them. That's something I was gonna touch on, especially when I, I light with practicals. A lot of the time on a set, you, you, there, there might be things on the set that you actually don't know lights up. So I always say to the art director, turn everything on for me and, and, you know, with the electricians, you know, there might be a cabinet that has got LEDs in it or something like that, that is like a free highlight in the background. Once you've decided the coverage with the director, turn the things on and walk around before you, before you establish it, because um, you can kind of paint yourself into a corner a little bit. I like using practicals on, lo on like night exterior locations as well. So I found that there's never quite the right gel to match up with a, with a street light, quite the right gel to match up with a mercury halide or whatever. And so uh, if I know that we're going to go to a particular street and it's going to have a thing, I'll, I'll get the, the gaffer to buy like four versions of lamps that we're going to find and get them, put, get spigots put in on them and just use them. So that's, that's the, the backlight 
for that one shot is that one practical that's on the building that we've pre-rigged knowing that we've got control of it so we can save it and it won't yeah. it won't flood the set if we're looking in the wrong direction it would be great to have lamps that didn't have cables. These, uh, these, these flurries. They don't have any cables. No, those flurries, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, if you start that... talking about 2K, 5K, whatever, whatever, whatever. But these would be great if you could just put a lamp down. You didn't have to it run would be a lovely cable. It's always a cable. But these, yeah. these are great. You can hide it in. I was like in forests with them. You know, you can put them behind a tree. Just stick yeah. them behind a, a tree and dial it right down because it's on your Apple app. And you can light acres down, and it's all on battery power. It's yeah. just, uh, I, did, I did a little unit in um, in the states, and the gaffer owned a huge, huge amount of of the light gear stuff, like an entire truck full of panels. And and but he'd invested heavily on wireless control, so we would put up LED panels like a reefer light, mm. um, but entirely wireless. So battery powered, it could you could rig it always. You know, pop these panels out clips in you know, and then just you just stand next to me with the dimmer and, I, and and it really was like completely completely cableless and I remember once years and years ago now but I was on this this is a, a thing I learned a long time ago is that on this set was this huge great big lamp and uh, it turned out that it was the most unusual light fitting ever and the only way to get one was to phone somebody up and wait six weeks while it was delivered so you know be sure that you know your practicals Thank you.